All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Hops and Highways. We missed you last week and we hope you had a really great Thanksgiving. I'm Jessica Lombardo and this is Dormy Roberts with me. And as you can see, we have another special guest today. Say hello and welcome to Brian Hall, Territory Manager with Lee Boy. We are hey guys, glad to be here. Thanks for having me. We're really glad Brian could join us today. He has been an advocate for the paving industry for many, many years. We're honored to have him with us. And um, before we start grilling Brian with questions, we're going to start as we always do and talk about uh, what we're drinking. So today I am back to my old staple bush light. I am just getting over COVID, so I can't taste or smell anything. So it's really great to have a good old standby on hand that I know what it tastes like and I know it's delicious. <laughs> Typical Jess drinking those blue smoothies again. <laughs> today I'm drinking, today I'm drinking Wowza. Fun name, I know, from Deschutes Brewing Company in Oregon. The flavor of the beer is crisp, light, and full-flavored, yet crushable. And according to their website, this citrusy, hazy pale ale will make you say wowza. So, Brian, what are you enjoying this Friday? I'm drinking from NoFo Brew Company here in my area in North Forsyth County, Georgia. I'm drinking NoFo Snow Ghost. This is a, uh, an IPA beer modeled after some of the Northeast IPAs. So uh, brewed uh, right here locally from us, from our friends at NoFo Brew Company, which is, they've been in business a few years now, and it's uh, it's really a great place for us to uh, uh, to hang out all year round. So uh, cheers to the guys at uh, at the NoFo Brew Company. Awesome. Those sound like really great beers. I'm, I'm left out of the IPA club today, but um, I can't wait to try them when I can taste again. And before we dive in, Brian, let's cheers uh, to making it through another week. So thanks for joining us. Cheers. My pleasure. All right. So, Brian, why don't you start by telling us a little bit about your role at Lee Boy and how it's changed over the years and just what exactly you do there for to help the company and to help your customers? Well, I've been with Lee Boy for going on 20 years now. I'm the uh, territory sales manager for North Carolina, South Carolina, and Florida, which I just took that territory this year after covering. I've covered most of the southeastern U.S. and then all, all up into the Midwest during my 20-year uh, career. So I've worked with a lot of uh, different contractors and different dealers throughout the U.S., especially here in the southeast. I also assist our, uh, our marketing department with the Lee Boy University, and doing a lot of the, uh, the training for our dealers, along with writing articles, uh, as you know, even for your magazine. So we write yeah. a lot of articles, and I do a lot of uh, training at the uh, trade shows. So we do, a, on behalf of Lee Boy, I do a lot of training presentations at Con Expo, World of Asphalt, and at uh, NPE. That's a mouthful. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot to do. So what has been the biggest struggle in 2020 for you, Brian? It caught us all by surprise, as you know, at Conspo. And this whole COVID is uh, really a room in it and something that we never had before started. And uh, we were like, okay, well, we'll take a couple weeks, work from our home offices and see. But then we found out this wasn't just a temporary, uh, temporary deal. This as usual wasn't as usual anymore. And I think our guest is having some technical difficulties. Uh oh. Well, in the meantime, Dormy, why don't we just uh, take a little sip of our beers and see if we can get back on with us? I mean, it wouldn't be 2020 without <laughs> failed Zoom calls. <laughs> That's true. That is true. Well, you know, Dormy, why don't we talk about a little bit of the news of the week and maybe we can get our conversation back with Brian later on. Perfect. So just like you said, there's been some bad news for infrastructure this week for a few states. So the American uh, Society of Civil Engineers released a report card for the infrastructure in two states, West Virginia and Maine. The bad news is neither state passed in any category. In Maine, grades across 16 categories span from a B for aviation to D for roads. Now for West Virginia, 
inadequate infrastructure was found across the state, resulting in an overall grade of D. Representative David McKinley said, as an engineer and someone who has spent his entire career around the construction industry, I realize how vital it is to invest in America's infrastructure. Rebuilding our roads, bridges, and water lines will help revitalize our economy and put people back to work, both at the federal and state level. And we have obligations to prioritize our infrastructure. Yeah, so our roadways, like we've talked about almost every week, they really need some help and they need some help at the federal level. So a bipartisan group of lawmakers in the House and Senate unveiled a $908 billion stimulus program on December 1st. And this emergency relief framework, it does include $45 billion for transit airlines, airport buses, and Amtrak. State and local governments will get about $160 billion, but it's unclear how much of that will be allocated directly to state DOTs. And during a news conference on Thursday, the National Transportation Research Nonprofit, or TRIP, released a Missouri report. So this report examines the conditions, use, and safety of Missouri roadways, highways, bridges, and the state's future mobility needs. So yeah, it was found that 52% of major roads and highways are in poor or mediocre condition, over half. That's crazy. 9% of their bridges are rated in poor or structurally deficient as well. And it was noted that 40% of all the state's bridges were built in 1969 or earlier. And most bridges were designed to last 50 years or more before major overhaul, overhaul or replacement. Tripp also talked about the fuel tax that is a critical source of state transportation funds. With U.S. passenger vehicles becoming more fuel efficient, consumers are filling up less. They also noted that the FAST Act is a majority source of fundings for roads, highways, and bridges repairs in Missouri. The program provides more than $5 billion for road repairs and improvements. And from 2014 to 2018, federal funds provided for highway improvements were equivalent of 85% of the amount of Missouri capital. And Brian, we're glad to see you back. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. No, we, we, we were talking about how, you know, it wouldn't be 2020, like Dory said, without some technical difficulties. So, And she was in the middle of asking you what your biggest struggle of 2020 was. So if you want to just go right ahead and go on with that. <laughs> So, uh, you know, and, and so we've had to find a new paradigm all over the industry, not just at Leeboy, on how we're going to go about doing our business. We you know, we were not making calls in the field for till about mid-July and until because we're part of a bigger company. We have a really we've got a responsibility not only to our customers, but to the families of the people that work at Lee Boy as well. So be safe. And that was our biggest challenge. We couldn't bring outsiders into the into the factory like we wanted to without their policies as well. And not only bringing customers, but vendors as well. So it uh, that's been a real challenge for us at Leeboy. But we think that we've overcome a lot of those hurdles. If you can't come to us, we'll figure out a way to come to you. You talked about how they've overcome challenges. So, you know, We'll talk maybe about how you stay in contact with your customers and how that's vital to your business. You know, we just found out that they canceled MPE. So what changes have you had to make to get that FaceTime with customers? Well, you know, it, it was really disappointing to us that not only World of Asphalt and MPE were canceled because that is our lifeline to a lot of those customers. And for many, many years, customers have looked forward to making those trips down to talk one-on-one with not only, you know, we're just the sales guys, we see them every day, but to talk to the engineers, to talk to the to the upper management of our companies about uh, concerns, both good and bad that they've had over the past years and how we can help uh, the industry. So, you know, to, to have that you know, rug kind of pulled out from under you is kind of tough. But again, we have to be good stewards. We have to be good neighbors. So, so what we're doing is we're we're going more virtual. We're we've instituted a lot more of our uh, demo programs where we have given the dealers the opportunity to demo the products that they've got in their in their stock. We've we've actually incentivized them to do that. Put the machines into the hands, not only for just walk arounds, but actually putting asphalt into the machines to where they can see those. So you've got to be able to make sure that the customer is getting what they uh, what they think they're getting. And sometimes they can't see that off a brochure. So you've got to put them in their hands. So we've had to be a little bit more proactive about how do we 
get those machines into the customer's hands. And, you know, we got a lot of guys that go out into the field from the factory itself, not only us guys in the field, but if we've got some uh, engineering issues, and that's kind of changed a little bit too, because we send somebody out into the field, they can't return back to the factory. They have to work remotely a while in quarantine before they can go back to the factory. So it's really been at Leboy, as not just with Leboy, but with all customers, with all manufacturers and dealers, being good stewards to the families of those companies. So it's been, been quite a challenge there. And you mentioned, like Lee Boy, how can great manufacturers and dealers help contractors weather this pandemic? We have to we go out and, and talk to them about new products. Not only are we trying to sell, we've got to be partners. So I think that you've got to think of new ways, not only just making calls, but figuring out, hey, how can we, how can we help you through this time? And it's funny because in the second quarter of the year, you know, when the PPP money was being uh, issued, customers didn't know whether they should take it or not. We've got good backlog, but will we have it come third quarter? So we want to make sure that we incentivize them to say, hey, we've got programs available to you if you want to buy now, but we've also got programs if you want to hold off. Uh, we'll give you longer warranties. We'll give you the best thing that, that a lot of manufacturers have done is yes, if going to the investment in a new paving machine or a grader or a distributor truck or anything that's out there, we'll push the payments off for three months just to make sure you, you can earn money and before you have to make those first payments. So we worked real hard with our banks to be able to do things like that, to give the owners of the companies peace of mind that if you buy a piece of machinery that you're going to be able to, uh, to make some money with that and uh, be able to pay for it down the road. So moving forward to 2021, you guys are always innovating with your products. And what are you going to do uh, in 2021 to kind of get the word out to your customers that you guys have these innovations and that you're still mm -hmm. moving forward as best you can? Well, you know, just like we're doing right now, social media is, is a great platform. You've got to get the word out and we're doing, uh, we're doing a lot of virtual meetings. We have a new national accounts program that we're working really tight with a lot of about 12 national accounts across the country. And, you know, the biggest thing that we're hearing from those people is they want to go green. They're trying to figure out it with, uh, with green credits they're able to get more bids and they're being a lot more safer with their uh, their green products. So we have to continue to innovate and not only innovate, but let them know what we're trying to do and make sure that that matches up with their business plan as well to make sure that they know that hey, even though it's a little bit non-traditional, we're still listening to the customer. We're still giving them what they need in the field as far as so for some of those things, because you've got, you've got to keep innovating, even though you might not be able to do it through trade shows or through you know, to learn sessions at the factory, uh, we to do it in a different, so we'll take, uh, we'll take the time to Muhammad. If we My favorite question that we've been asking, what is the thing that you miss most about pre-COVID life and something you really just can't get wait, wait to get back to doing once this pandemic ends? Well, you know, when as a uh, as a field sales rep, I, I've been selling in the field for about five years now. So traveling is a big part of what we do. And it, while it's trying to get a little bit back to normal, you just really, when you travel, you don't know what you're walking into, not only through restaurants and hotels, but really the customers. When you're walking into the customer's office, the number one rule is, is don't go anywhere you're not in. Okay, don't make calls are it should be done a different way okay they should know you're coming you should be allowed to come into their organization and that you know that's kind of uh different than what we're we're used to you know we'll show up on a job site and you just got to make sure that they're comfortable with what's going on you know they want to see you but they also want to make sure that you're not bringing anything to them that that's not welcome so i'm, I'm looking forward to the ease of travel out in the field, the ease of air travel. I just got uh, back from a trip where I had connections. And when you are in an airport and have to wear a mask from the time you enter one airport through the connections for about five or six hours, it's tough. And yeah. we'll do what we have to do to get to the other side of this pandemic. 
and get back to a little bit of normalcy. So, and, and we want to we want to do the things that we like to do with customers. We want to take them tonight, and sit around a boardroom and discuss next year's options without having to uh, to stay six feet away from each other. And you know, just being able to walk into an office and shake somebody's hand and say, "We were thank you for your business." Totally agree, and I think that we all miss that human interaction too. So all of these questions have made me really thirsty. So I think we need to take a drink. <laughs> so cheers. 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 So that's all the questions we have for you today, Brian. Thank you so much for joining us. We really enjoyed the conversation and insight into how Leboy continues to connect with your customers through the pandemic. Thanks again, Brian. Thanks so much, Brian. Thank you guys, and thank you for everything that you guys do for the industry. And wow, we can't wait to see you guys in person again. I can't wait, Brian. Thanks so much. Have a great weekend. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Awesome. I love having special guests. It just makes me so happy to see my friends this way. If I can't see them at trade shows, at least I can see them on Zoom, right? Right. Okay, so we were talking about um, some bad news in terms of our roadways, the ASCE and TRIP both released some, some reports about um, failing infrastructure. Um, and unfortunately, um, for our roadways, we are currently only under a one year extension of the FAST Act. So the new Congress is really going to need to address another long-term funding solution for our roadways. Um, the extension did provide some certainty for 2021, but did not increase funding levels. The extension bill maintains surface transportation programs at current levels of 47.1 billion for highways and 12.3 billion for transit programs. So in our state of the industry report that just dropped this week, Allison Primo Black with American Roads and Transportation Builders Associations or ARPA as you probably know them, she says that states may see an opportunity for additional additional funding as Congress finalizes the fiscal year 2021 spending bill this month. Um, and between 2018 and 2020, Congress has approved an additional 15 billion for transportation programs through the annual appropriations process. So if they choose to do so again in fiscal year 2021, that's gonna provide some additional revenue to help states over the next year. So that's some good news. Yeah. And in addition to that, the National Asphalt Pavement Association president and CEO, Audrey Copeland, says that in the next year, she expects Congress to pass a budget and reconciliation bill where the highway trust fund solvency issue should be addressed. Uh, in terms of funding uh, the future programs, Congress must consider a combination of increasing the gas tax in the early years, index to inflation, inflation and some type of user-based fee like a vehicle miles traveled uh, in order to have the highway trust fund to be uh, sustainable for the rest of the future. Yeah, so our state of the industry report, it's full of ton of insight like that from US Chamber of Commerce, NAPA, ARPA, the Sage Policy Group, um, PPRA. So we're going to drop a link to that in the comments so you can see what 2021 kind of is going to look like for the road building industry. And in the meantime, we'll drink to someone finally figuring out a long term solution about how to fund the Highway Trust Fund. So cheers. Cheers. All right. So um, during this portion of the show, we usually talk about best practices or give you guys some tips um, about um, how to work better, smarter. And this week, we really want to talk to you about staying warm. And unless you're lucky enough to live in the South and work year round, um, you're starting to see colder temperatures out on your job sites and maybe even some snow. I know that in Ohio, we had a bunch of contractor friends who got snowed out and that's unfortunate, but hopefully they can get back out and finish their jobs. Um, so the cold weather, obviously isn't going to stop you from working if you have jobs to get done. And we want to make sure that if you're out there, you're being safe. So that's right. So this week we have some tips for you on how to safely work in those colder temperatures. Our first tip is a no brainer, dress in layers. Um, invest in some thermal insulated coveralls, which can help eliminate core body heat loss while affording a good range of motion. So you can still lift your leg up onto that machine or move around as you normally would. Um, your outermost layer should be lightweight and wind resistant. And the best practice is to incorporate high visibility and reflective striping into your outer layer so you don't need to wear a vest. 
Yeah, so the next thing you really want to make sure you invest in is a great pair of double layer thermo socks and a good pair of insulated boots. So you might want to consider sizing up your winter boots to allow for another layer of socks or use two layers. Um, also consider using some insole inserts for insulation, comfort, and stability. And for your hands, you want to be sure to select the correct glove configuration for the task. Uh, dexterity, insulating properties, grip surface characteristics, and permeability, liners and inserts are all important considerations when choosing a glove. The glove industry has come a long way. Uh, do the research with good PPE suppliers. Uh, you'll be surprised what's out there. Now for headgear, a lot of heat it escapes from your head. So uh, you already know that most of the time you have to wear a hard hat and why brim hard hats are generally recommended for outdoor work because the brim can act as a wind deflector and glare shield. So whichever hat you choose, you wanna select a helmet liner to go in there um, that can turn it into a more comfortable assembly. Uh, flannel and cotton liners are among the most common Fleece lined full head and neck liners are also probably the warmest combination that you'll see. And protecting your head and neck from heat loss is an important element to staying warm. So make sure that you're covering all of this up when you're out there. Wraparound eye protection can also uh, prevent body heat loss. Um, there's a lot of blood flow around the eyes and wearing safety glasses or snow goggles can min minimize the heat loss. In addition, eyeballs are covered with a mucous membrane and subject to being uh, desiccated and irritated by the cold, dry air and wind. Not to mention dirt particles or a virus. I made Dormy say mucous membrane. I don't <laughs> like that. <laughs> So finally, we just want to make sure that you and your crew are prepared for the weather. Have a warm place for breaks and a possibly a place to change your socks, um, bring an extra pair, change them out as needed. It's really going to help you stay warm out there and hold a safety meeting to explain, you know, the dangers uh, that could happen, um, hypothermia treatment for that and frostbite if you really have to be out in those severe temperatures. And we're really having our fingers crossed for a more mild winter so you don't have to deal with any of that and uh, cheers to that and stay warm. This is our favorite part of the show. My favorite part of the week. Oh, of the week. The week. <laughs> For Build America Friday, we're giving a shout out to Joshua Smith and the crew at Pavement Maintenance Inc. They had a huge job to complete on Well Street in downtown Milwaukee in our home state of Wisconsin. Yeah, so for this project, the PMI crew had five different mills on site. They had one work in W-250, two W-220s, and three W-50s on the job. They had to mill around 250 structures. I know guys who complain about milling around one, 250. In total, they milled 4,800 tons to grade at an average of four to five inches over an eight hour period. Wow. That is nuts. But that's an awesome picture, and we are going to cheers the crew for comp completing such a complex job. So cheers to you guys at uh, cheers guys. Paper Maintenance. <clears throat> well, that's all that we have for this week. Thanks again to Brian for joining us, and always shoot us a message, send us an email if you have a project. We would like to salute you next week, or if you want to join us on a future episode, we'd love to hear from you. Yeah, so thank you everyone for watching. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm recovering from COVID. And I just want to say this week, as I do every week, that I cannot wait for this pandemic to be over. Uh, I really just want everybody to be safe out there, not just on the job site, but in your day-to-day -day activities as well. Please socially distance as much as you can. Don't forget to wear your mask. And really just be kind and thoughtful to those around you. We're going to beat this. And cheers to everyone to end this pandemic and have a great weekend. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, and I almost forgot, uh, join us next week. We're gonna have Edward from Asphalt Life on. He's gonna talk about the importance of social media, how it's really helping the asphalt industry to be more of a community where everybody is just helping everybody else out. So we're really excited to have him on next week and we will see you then. Thanks everyone. Watch Hops and Highways live every Friday at 3 p.m. on Asphalt Contractors' Facebook page. 
or catch the replay on 4constructionpros.com forward slash videos.